Hello? Yes, hello. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. So, um, can I understand first, uh, how is your child so far? How is my what? Your child, your baby, was sick. Oh, Am yes, I? yeah, yeah. I'm getting better. Yeah. Okay, that's glad. Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -mm. okay. So, <clears throat> let me know. Do you have any comments from the slides or the links that I sent to you? Is it everything is written yes. you as you expect? Yes, yeah. Yeah, everything is okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I believe we stopped here last time. So, let me continue from where we stopped. Mm -hmm. um, do you need any uh, clarification from the previous class? No, everything is clear. Okay. So, uh, typically, when we, uh, let me uh, give me a second, mm -hmm. please. It seems that I don't have the, oops, yeah, I didn't share yet. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I think you will start to see now, maybe. Yep. It's loading. Yeah. Taking more time than usual. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so um, first of all, we would like to to know one thing that uh, it is better always that we uh, use templates. So, did you hear about the word template before, and do you know what it, what does this mean? Template is like a sample, right? Of the... Yes, yes, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. So, uh, by time, of course, at the start, you start with a, a, sam a simple template that doesn't have too many mm -hmm. things. But by time, mm -hmm. um, it becomes you you become equipped with your own uh, bigger template that you can start with. So, it means that you don't really have to start from scratch. So the template that we are talking about here as a starter mm -hmm. uh, is a simple template, which means that it only, only contains the basic HTML, header, body, and the ending, and maybe a little mm -hmm. bit uh, about the title, nothing more. But mm -hmm. when you grow, so mm -hmm. you will have your libraries from the JavaScript, and you also have your own uh, basic template that you can start with. So it will have a lot of uh, CSS and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then um, we know very well that we can't have more than uh, HTML tags like that in one file. So every file only have one HTML tag and one header tag and one body tag. Is that clear so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. we cannot put any code between the HTML tag and the header tag and the head tag. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. also cannot put any code between the closing of of this head and the body. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this this is the closing of the head and this is the start of the body. We cannot put any code in between. And the same goes if you look here. So this is starting to see, we're starting here to see the end of an HTML file. We're closing the body tag and we're mm -hmm. also closing the HTML tag. We also cannot put here any code in between. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this yes. is like restricted places that we cannot use any code there. Um, mm -hmm. HTML does not care about uh, capital letters, so it's okay to use capital letters or non-capital letters. Uh, tags mm -hmm. and tag set doesn't can occur on the same line, so you can you can put them like that or even on separate lines. Both are the same. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. indents or indentation does not really matter. So do you know what the mean indentation? No. Okay. Mm, so let me give an example here. Let me give an example. So I share this. Um, see here. I think you can see my screen. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So indentation, this is not so critical in HTML. So can you see that this is indentation? So oh, I'm indenting, okay. yeah. So this mm -hmm. kind of indentation um, make a big difference in languages like Python. But in mm -hmm. HTML in general, uh, mm -hmm. it is just for readability. So we it means that we can uh, keep mm -hmm. this indentation in a way that this mm -hmm. header, so mm -hmm. it's matching with the top tag. But mm -hmm. if you don't 
then it's also fine and it will work and it will validate. It's just for mm -hmm. our own readability. Okay? Okay. Clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. I think this is the takeaways. Okay, um, so we know very well that um, we would like to always save our files as, uh, let me mm -hmm. put here, .html extension. And I'm not sure if you tried um, the program on, uh, on your Mac. I, don't, uh, I couldn't download. I mean, I download, but it doesn't open this notepad. So I download BBD. Yes. So because if you if you are on a Mac, so definitely this will not maybe it will not work yeah. for you. This is only That's Windows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I would say we go to the next. Okay. Did you know what is the meaning a cookie is? Do you know? Did you see this word before or hear about? Yes. It? Yes. Yeah. Except cookies, all cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Means, okay. Um, so yes, what does it mean? Uh, Means the like um, I don't know browser gonna give similar topics later on something like this. Or... Mm, that is smart remark. So it, no. is a, this is not a real definition for. I mean, this is, you didn't touch the real definition for the cookie, but mm -hmm. you uh, you have a strong remark. Okay, that's actually mm -hmm. good. So um, what you what you said. Is a, mm -hmm. one of the benefits or what a, one of the usages of the cookie. Mm -hmm. The cookie okay. is really a small file, a small text file that they mm -hmm. put inside your PC every time you visit a specific website. So some mm -hmm. websites leave cookies on your computer, some doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the website that actually leave cookie on your file, they can leave many cookies, not only one. So it means that they they um, uh, leave a lot of files, and each file have a specific purpose. So mm -hmm. some file will store um, uh, login information. Mm -hmm. Some file will store login information. Some some files will store maybe the most visited um, um, pages pages uh -huh. on on the website. Maybe mm -hmm. your favorite pages, maybe mm -hmm. they will store your your name. So, or maybe, yeah, like your favorite items or something like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it depends. Okay. So it differs. Okay. But at the end of the day, this is just a small file. Mm -hmm. And it will store information about you. Or mm -hmm. related to your, your um, surfing during mm -hmm. the website. So mm -hmm. your experience or maybe your favorite things. And so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. And you also have to understand. Sometimes uh, you will find the websites spy on your cookies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you like Facebook is very popular that it spy on your activities, even when you are outside the Facebook. So, mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of discussion about how they do this because it is very hard to actually track or trace what you are doing outside the Facebook, unless you really maybe read the cookies or have access to, to what you are doing on your PC and or even the phone and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. so yes. now let us go talk about cache. So again, um, what you said just now as an answer, it is actually mm -hmm. a benefit from the cookie, but not the real cookie it is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the cache is a copy from a website or an image or a sound file that is saved locally on your computer. So most of the time when you when you surf the internet, uh, copies from the file that you visit and mm -hmm. even the HTML files, so are saved on your, in a specific folder on your computer. And this fol folder uh, tend to get large, large by, by time that it mm -hmm. can even be in many megabytes. So from maybe every five, um, three to five months, if you are a heavy surfer, then you really need to clean the file because you will find it occupy a lot of space on your computer. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but what is, I mean, okay, I talked about the cache, but yeah. what is what is the benefit of, of using a cache? Why is it keep a copy for a one web page on your computer? The purpose, the purpose is that 
uh, you actually do not really need to consume the bandwidth of your internet in actually retrieving and opening files that you visited before. So mm -hmm. if you watch the video, so maybe the, or an image, so they load the image faster from your cache instead of going to retrieve it again from the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that okay. clear so far? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you hear about uh, W3C? Oh, no. no. So no. this is a world, world wide web consortium. So this mm -hmm. organization is actually the one who is defining the standards for web browsers. And mm -hmm. they even, um, so, okay, we know that we have different browsers and most of them or all of them must follow a certain standard in, in how to say, translating or showing uh, HTML pages or web pages. So a web page that you design in HTML must show in the same way in all the browsers. So the one who is doing this kind of uh, standards is W3C. And they are the one who initiated the website that do the validation for the HTML mm -hmm. code. So if you design an HTML code and then mm -hmm. you want to validate that if it's correct and it will work on all the browser, we will mm -hmm. see the website that do that. And this organization is the one who producing this kind of validator. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, ARIA is um, a technical specification that they, they, they publish and it actually increases accessibility of web pages. So um, if, we, if we see here, this is a blind person and mm -hmm. he is trying to access web pages using a screen reader. So this is, um, yeah. So at the end of the day, ARIA is just a technical specification and is produced mm -hmm. by the W3C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. And okay. So we know very well that HTML is not a programming language, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So it is just only for what? For it's just a code or to write so, a code. Um, it's is for formatting. Uh, web pages it is for uh -huh. it is a language for for publishing web pages writing and publishing web pages but it's not a programming language mm -hmm. so it can contain tags and codes just to to format a page and make it appear in a proper way mm -hmm. on the browser not more than that so okay. also it can contain links to other web pages so it means that uh, as we know that uh, typically a website does not only contain one page, it will contain many pages and we need to link that pages together to, to build up a website. So mm -hmm. you might have a contact page, you might have a blog uh, page with a, a lot of uh, articles inside, you might have a about me section or a pay about me page. So every page is part of your website. Uh, so you cannot put all your web page just in one, one uh, uh, you cannot put all your website in one page. So you mm -hmm. have to separate them in different pages and you have to start linking them. So mm -hmm. the linking is also done by the HTML. You, do, you don't need another language to do, that, to do that, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, that is good. So we know what is it, what does it mean by CSS? Uh, CSS is like formatting the, the web page, like to make it more interact. So it is for styling web pages? Styling, yeah. Styling, mm -hmm. yes. So HTML is for formatting and CSS is for styling. And we call CSS is a cascading style sheets. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. know, okay. Um, JavaScript is a client side scripting language. Do you know what the meaning client side? Do you mm -hmm. remember when we talked last time about oh. the client server model? Yeah, yeah. So there is programming language that is executed on the server, and there is another programming language that is executed on the client. So uh -huh. I give you an example. Uh, PHP, for example, and yeah, other languages, but PHP, just for to be specific in this case, is mm -hmm. not executed on the browser. It is ex executed on the server. So so um, what does this mean that uh, PHP, there is certain things that it cannot 
it cannot really do because once the web browser or the server send you a file and this HTML file and the JavaScript file is shown to you at the browser. So it means that PHP execution is completely done. They cannot really execute any PHP anymore unless um, with the help with, with other tools. I will tell you that now. So <coughs> again, uh, the point here is that before the file is sent to you, any PHP code inside the website is executed on the server before it is sent to you. But on mm -hmm. the JavaScript, it is totally different. The JavaScript is called client side because so it only executes once the page appears in front of you. So, mm -hmm. so it means that when you click, yeah. we are not able to actually um, execute PHP code because when you click, the page is already in your browser, on your computer at the moment. It's not at the mm -hmm. server anymore. Yes, mm -hmm. we are able to call the server, but when once something comes appear in front of you, the mm -hmm. only language that we, we can use to make things happen, to make the page dynamic, to make the page respond to clicks, is mm -hmm. actually the JavaScript. And we call that a client-side scripting language. Did I make mm -hmm. myself clear or I, yeah. I took too much? Yeah. Okay, no, 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 now, clear, this clear. Is okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. so to be frank, just, I mean, yeah. So uh, JavaScript is not so easy. It is uh, a little yeah. bit cryptic if you compare it to other programming language. But mm. it is it recently, especially recently, like in the last 10 years, um, it is gaining very strong popularity. So before it was not so popular like that. There was another mm -hmm. languages. But it seems mm -hmm. that JavaScript managed to survive all the other competition and is still there. OK, mm -hmm. um, I think um, that is that is it for, for, for the definitions. Um, mm -hmm. We know that it is good to, to actually validate what we do. But I mm -hmm. don't recommend um, that you do this validation uh, every, um, how to say, so not every time you write a line or two, then you go and validate. That will take so much time from you. And mm -hmm. and actually, also you also have to understand that um, this valid the official validator that was, was produced by this uh, W three C uh, that uh, that is was part of their website is not working at the moment. But uh, this so they put their full support to this kind of validator at the moment. We will mm -hmm. see an image for it. So this is the link for the current validator. So mm -hmm. again. Uh, the one who is responsible for creating the rules and even supporting the current valid validator is also again the WCC. Okay. okay. Um, so can you see this? Yeah. So this is the validator that initially we used with um, uh, from this WCC uh, mm -hmm. organization. Uh, this have a problem at the moment and maybe it is being uh, updated. But uh, what, what they say at the moment that this new H HTML checker is the one mm -hmm. that is used and it is not using that address. Okay, so mm -hmm. in the last two years, this changed a bit. So again, I already put for you um, in the front, the link to the validator, which is also the new uh, HTML checker. So mm -hmm. did you use it before? Yes, yeah, I did. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is uh, perfect. You are able to upload an HTML and check it, right? So if mm -hmm. you see this green mark, it means that your document yeah. is okay. There is no errors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, okay. What if it doesn't validate? So you know what is the issues that you can fix in if a file does not validate or what could be the possible errors? The validator the, it sometimes says, right, what's wrong there? Where um, sometimes you... says, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, um, sometimes I would advise... Sometimes it's a good thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. I would advise always, as with any programming language or um, that we see, that typically mm -hmm. the f first error is the key to all the other errors. So, you, so typically mm -hmm. you will find five or six errors appearing to you in the screen. Typically, mm -hmm. most of the 90% of the time, the error mm -hmm. comes actually from from the the main error is the first error 
this is the one mm -hmm. that caused all the other errors that follows. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also one big issue that we face. That's why we never recommend writing in um, a Word document. You know Microsoft Word, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we should not copy code from Microsoft Word because if we copy code from there, this is not mm -hmm. a plain text. So when we copy code, it come actually with certain formats, uh, uh, especially for the double quotation. Uh, they mm -hmm. have a funky, funky codes that is not actually going to be validated. So can you see the difference between this and this? Do you see the double quotation here? Or oh, the yes, quotes yeah. here and the quotes here? Yes. So yeah. This will not work. This this comes from a Microsoft Word uh, HTML. So some people will, will uh, just put their slides or quotes there. But mm -hmm. if you copy it from there and then you, you try to validate, it will not validate. So you ha it you have to be you have to make sure that this kind of quotes you are the one using this kind of quotes mm -hmm. not this one, okay? Yeah. Okay. 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 That is uh, good. So I would say we can yeah. So uh, in the previous class you told me that uh, you have a little bit knowledge about computers. So let me just share with you. The, this is a server. This is how mm -hmm. a typical server would look like. So we mm -hmm. call that. So what is the difference between this and this? We call this as a tower server, which is mm -hmm. uh, something that can that can um, stand on a, a table or something, or a, or mm -hmm. even a disk. But this is this kind of server is more advanced and have more abilities, and they call it rack mounted. Rack mounted means I will show you in the next slide what is mean a rack. Uh, so can you see this these things? Mm -hmm. So they have handles, and mm -hmm. uh, this give me the ability to change part of the hardware just by switching on uh, some um, uh, buttons and then mm -hmm. uh, ra raising, pulling this arm out. I'm able mm -hmm. to remove hardware while the server is still running. So, mm -hmm. and this is, again, this is a bigger version. So mm -hmm. this is a server. And this is a bigger version of this. Okay? okay. So, but both of them, this and this, mm -hmm. are called servers. Mm -hmm. Of course, with, with different abilities. So, if you look here, this is what we call a rack mounted server. So, so uh, as I, I believe a company with, with 100 and 200 employees, they mm -hmm. might be having servers like that. It means that they use a rack. This is what we call a rack. Mm -hmm. And they have all the network devices and the servers mounted in this way. Okay? So mm -hmm. they just don't use the previous version, which was just something, a computer that stand on a table or something. So mm -hmm. that is a more advanced one. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, so they gather all the equipment that is uh, related to servers or networks together. Okay? Okay. And okay, uh, did you hear about mainframe before? Did you did you know what is a mean a mainframe? No, not really. So this looks like the previous slide. They look like similar. I mean, from from the first yeah. glance, yeah, they like similar. Yeah. What is the difference? But actually, there is a big difference. But mm -hmm. we will not go into detail. This is not our uh, specific, but just to let you know. So mm -hmm. mainframe is typically, um, you know, ticketing companies, they have millions of people that is um, that want to access real-time mm -hmm. information. So mm -hmm. ticketing company cannot use a normal server, like the one I shared with you. So you need mm -hmm. to use mainframe, which is more advanced type of computer, okay, and have high processing capability that is not available on web servers. Okay, did I make mm -hmm. myself clear? This is the yeah. only thing that you need to know, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, we go to the uh, personal computer and even the laptop. Uh, mm -hmm. We see, do you know what is that? And what is this? The hard disk, no? Yes, oh, sorry. perfect. Sorry. Yes, so this mm -hmm. is HDD. This is the old type of hard disk. So mm -hmm. if a computer uh, from maybe 10 years ago, then typically this is very common. Mm -hmm. So it means that it have a moving mechanical parts and if it falls it's gone 
-hmm. Why? Because because uh, this part uh, actually is almost almost touching this plates. This is a magnetized plates where they save the information uh, that mm -hmm. uh, videos or images that we want to keep always uh, in a permanent storage. So this mm -hmm. hard disk is a permanent storage. Mm -hmm. And the new type of hard disk is called SSD. So this is almost 10 times faster than this old hard disk because here there is no moving mechanical parts. The mechanical parts is slower, definitely slower. Electronics mm -hmm. is much faster. So this is compact in size. This is lighter in the weight and it's ten time, almost 10 times faster. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Okay. And I would say, um, so let me um, just clear this again. I know that we don't want to touch so much details, but mm -hmm. let me just differentiate things to you. This is mm -hmm. the center. For... Sorry again. No, no, no. I was saying, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I need That's to good. slow down. No, no, no. It's okay. Okay. So this is called the CPU, and also sometimes we call it a microprocessor, which is the brain on your computer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. everything that every instruction that we need to execute on your computer, it needs to be mm -hmm. done here. It needs to be understood and executed by the microprocessor, which is the brain of your computer. Every type of JavaScript that you write on your uh, PC need to be mm -hmm. executed by the CPU. Okay, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. uh, this is the RAM and this is an illustration of it. And this is the hard disk that we, I just now show you an image or, so it can mm -hmm. be HDD or SSD, it doesn't matter. The functionality <laughs> is the same. So we call that main memory, which is the RAM. And we call the hard disk is a secondary storage. Okay, because it's not the main. This is a permanent storage, and we call it secondary. Why? Because typically the CPU does not have access to the secondary, or it does not execute things directly that is located in the secondary storage. So if the CPU want to execute or open a program in your computer, mm -hmm. so what it does, it have to bring the software first, load it into the RAM, and once it is completely loaded in the RAM, then the CPU is able to execute the instructions. So now let me tell you this. Uh, imagine you have, um, uh, did you, you, dealt, you dealt before with Microsoft Word, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to deal with Microsoft Word, you click mm -hmm. on the, on the um, uh, maybe desktop or the menu for mm -hmm. the icon that <laughs> belongs to the Microsoft Word, right? Yeah. So once you click the icon, what happens is that um, the uh, CPU give instructions to the operating system and the mm -hmm. operating system, either it is Windows or even uh, Mac OS, mm -hmm. they, they actually go and search the hard, the hard disk. Where mm -hmm. is the file responsible for Microsoft Word? And it loaded from the hard disk to the RAM. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then mm -hmm. from there, uh, you find the CPU start to executing the instruction that is loaded in the RAM. That's why sometimes it takes some time when you want to open a big file like the Microsoft Word. So it will take maybe 30 seconds to uh, showing you some images that, oh, we are loading or something like that. So this is the, the this process is actually the time taken to load the files from the hard disk into the RAM. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the instruction flow from the RAM to be processed and executed by the CPU. Is that clear or am I confusing you? Yeah. Clear? Yeah, very clear, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, okay. Uh, just also touching the surface without going into too much details. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. In reality, this is how your RAM... Mm -hmm looks like so this is a ram of a desktop uh, desktop computer and this mm -hmm. is a ram of um, a laptop mm -hmm. okay and can you guess what is this also ram excellent okay this is a ram Not old version yes the old old version so this is like mm -hmm. 1960s 
-hmm. when they first created the computer. So that mm -hmm. was something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. now, do you know what is this and what is that? Can you guess? Not also RAM? So no? this is the CPU, which is CPU. The, yeah, the, the, mm -hmm. the brain of the computer. And mm -hmm. there is a lot of small uh, connectors yeah. uh, mm -hmm. there, p small pins, okay? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so where is this microprocessor located? This, this electronic circuit is called motherboard. Mm -hmm. So we fit all the electronic parts that we need to use inside the computer there. Okay, so okay. Uh, this microprocessor sits under this uh, metal plate. So this metal plate is for what? Is for actually cooling the microprocessor. The microprocessor mm -hmm. actually heat up very fast, especially if it re if it reach um, hundred percent um, uh, uh, processing power. So sometimes you execute things that um, need a lot of processing power from the mm -hmm. computer. So that will heat up the CPU. So it is a compact, the, the CPU is very compact that mm -hmm. it will uh, very fast heat up. So to pre prevent it from being a burn, mm -hmm. so, or even uh, going bad, or, or, or even how to say Rosa, I don't know how to say it in English, sorry. Um, so mm -hmm. it would, I would say that uh, they need a fan and they need yeah. a, a cooling heat sink. So they call that heat sink. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clear so far? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay, so if you can guess, so the SSD in it is commercial um, look, it can look like uh, any, any of those two. So mm -hmm. um, some versions of the laptops, spe specifically because it doesn't have uh, very much space and very compact in size and very thin, the laptop, so they use this kind of SSD. So this is not a RAM, this is a hard disk, mm -hmm. but it is in a version that um, use a compact space like that, okay? But the typical mm -hmm. um, look of a hard disk, typically, is also like that. So you will find that um, maybe computers from seven or eight years ago, if they have an SSD, they will have it in this, in this way. New laptops that uh, is um, maybe uh, having a lot of competition to make the laptop very thin, so they mm -hmm. cannot have. They can. It's not easy for them to 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 have a space for that. So they use this kind of uh, SSD, mm -hmm. and of course, this is more expensive than this. Did I mm -hmm. make myself clear so far? Yes, sir. Okay. I remember this. 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 You have seen it. SSD. Yes, before. Okay, that's excellent. So we talk now about, about uh, HTML. Let me, mm -hmm. um, okay. Just, so every time we will touch a little bit on the HTML, we'll touch a little bit on the CSS and also on the JavaScript, all at the uh, same class so that we mm -hmm. go in parallel. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know that uh, HTML, you already know, are and, and familiar with it more than the mm -hmm. others. Okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, we said that, uh, okay, um, he's talking about creating a new HTML file. Um, and we know already that we need to use a notepad or even a PP edit in the mm -hmm. on the Mac. The difference here, so uh, do you see how he writes the name for the HTML file? How to what, sorry? The, how, he, how he write the name, Ferris web page. Do you see that? Do you see yes. that there is no spaces here? Yes, yeah. So yes. it is very painful and it's sometimes troublesome that we put spaces in between the name of an HTML file. So mm -hmm. just be aware of that. If we need uh -huh. to create a, a name or for an HTML file, please mm -hmm. put the words together. Or sure. you can put an underscore, but it is preferable to be like this. Okay, understood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the summary yeah. of what this slide is talking about. So okay. again, um, okay, I would like to say here, again, this is the validator, and there is mm -hmm. no issue with that. So I would say that if I'm using the notepad, um, I would, um, mm -mm, this is talking about... Um, 
this is talking about creating an HTML template, uh, which is simple like that, just putting a title and and he is referring where the title appears. So do you know, I think you know that, right? It's very simple. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I would say, let me go here. So do you know what's the meaning a paragraph is or the P tag? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, that's uh, also clear. We mm -hmm. move to the next. You know what is the purpose of a header? Sorry, uh, yeah. I know yeah. that we can have only six of it. Okay, six. perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. do you know anything about SEO? SEO? No. Okay, no. so um, the point here is that actually when we created, when we use the headers, uh, there mm -hmm. is a science behind it. So you, you not just simply create a header without a purpose. There must be a purpose. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I mean, we are not able to study too much details in the SEO, but it is important just to touch it and mm -hmm. to know about it. I'm, I'm not going to go into the deep, deep details today or even put a slide for it, but I just let you know because I, I'm not sure or I'm not, I was not aware that you need some mm -hmm. details about it. Um, mm -hmm. So SEO typically, uh, I'm also not a master of SEO. So if, I, if you need more on SEO, then there non-programmers people are able to teach that so what i want to say in short mm. seo is a science um behind making a website rank high in google search or on search engine in general so mm. okay um the, the seo actually talk about um many many things which mean that um you need to also uh, I, this one I can also share with you. This is very easy. This does not need an expert to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. If you would like to your page to actually mm -hmm. rank high in the search engine, you need mm -hmm. to consider that when you are writing uh, H1 uh, mm -hmm. headers, because mm -hmm. why? Because, okay, so the Google actually look into the content of the page to yeah. know if it really it's a competitor page that people would look like will will actually have a tendency to click on it when it comes on the first page because Google always mm -hmm. always would like to make the search result the best, which means that it's really very happy or its target to make people not go to the second page in Google in the search engine uh, results. So they yes, would yes. like them to to. The three or four top results is the one that people can answer the people request. So mm -hmm. if you are searching for something, you you also will not be happy that you keep searching tens of tens of tens of yeah. results from Google, right? You will mm -hmm. just would like to f to find your target in the first three or four results, right? Am okay. I right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the thing is, uh, Google look into these kind of headers a lot. These headers actually play, play a big role. So, mm -hmm. okay, SEO. So, first of all, this is a page. At the end, it's giving information to the user, mm -hmm. and based on the header. The, so, again, the user judge not only based on header but also based on content. But um, one of the most significant things to the Google itself when it is uh, reading your page. Because Google is, again, is a computer, right? It's, it's a dumb yeah. machine. Mm -hmm. So they look at a lot about the headers. So the information that you put inside the header is very, very important, especially H1. So mm -hmm. if you think that H1 is no different from H2 and H3, no, there is a difference. So H1 and H2 is one of the most important. And mm -hmm. not only that, so if you want new page, if you're talking, for example, about cooking or no, not, not cooking. Let me be specific. Cooking, uh, 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 steak, mm -hmm. sticks, for example. So, so if you want your page to, to really appear to the people who are looking for <coughs> recipes mm -hmm. in cooking steaks, so you need this word steaks 
to appear a lot in your H1, H2, and H3. So, so yes, of course, it needs to appear a lot also on the um, on the paragraphs, but the headers mm -hmm. is important. Okay, mm -hmm. I know sometimes you are as a de as a designer um, doesn't really care too much about the contents, but sometimes you need to provide that to your um, your end user or your client. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is required from you. So a little bit uh, knowledge about the SEO might uh, might be of help. And also, um, you also have to understand that we um, mm -hmm. sometimes, okay, uh, we Google allow us to know um, uh, the keywords that is searched a lot in, yeah. in every country. So mm -hmm. we can go to um, uh, something called Keyword Planner in, in Google Tools, Google mm -hmm. Advertising Tools. So if you want to make ads on Google, mm -hmm. so uh, Google allow it, give us a tool called Keyword Planner, and I will give it some keywords at the initial stage, and it will tell me, okay, these keywords is searched by which volume every month. So in Malaysia, for example, um, mm -hmm. uh, if I, I'm, I'm a tutor, so I am concerned about computer science, for example. So I mm -hmm. will go search computer science. I put the word computer science in the keyword planner. I will put mm -hmm. also HTML, Python, and other programming language there. And then I will see the search volume for that keywords inside uh, the keyword planner. And I will also know, the Google, Google will also let me know uh, this which keyword I'm able to use and rank my website high. Because why? He will tell you, uh, every word have a strong competition or a middle competition or a, or a weak competition. So your chance is to rank in a weak competition keywords. So maybe when you are doing a stakes website, so maybe, maybe the stakes itself, it is popular and a lot of people search about it. But maybe mm -hmm. there is another keyword that is related to stakes that it's have a less cool. competition. So you mm -hmm. would like to use that less competition keywords a lot in your headers. Mm -hmm. Did I make myself clear so far? Yes. This is yes. just touching the surface without going into too much details. Uh, later, mm -hmm. I can see if we need to go into deep details. But at the moment, I believe as a pro from the programming uh, point of view, we mm -hmm. don't need to go into details. Is it okay so far? Yes, okay. Okay. Everything is clear. Okay. Uh, do you know what is the meaning uh, a list is? Yeah. Okay. Do you know the mm -hmm. difference between an ordered list and a non-ordered list? Yeah. Okay. So you know the difference between this and this, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So do you know mm -hmm. that we are not able to put a, a list inside a paragraph? Mm, no. Nope. Okay, know. so this is the no, which is not acceptable, and this is what we can do. So we mm -hmm. are not able to put inside a paragraph a list like that, but mm -hmm. the opposite is allowed, so we will see that. Okay, now, so uh, this is an ordered list, right? And then mm -hmm. we are also not allowed to put the header inside mm -hmm. a, an ordered list in this way, but we are allowed to do th this way. So. If you want to put a paragraph, you can put the paragraph tags inside the list here, but not uh, the opposite. You cannot put the ordered list inside the paragraph. You, the opposite can be done. And you're also allowed to put a header inside mm -hmm. one of your uh, list points. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Let me see. Um, yeah, what is... So, again, if you want to put a header, for your mm -hmm. uh, list, you can put it on top also. It is also possible to put mm -hmm. H2 tag uh, on top of the list like that, okay? Mm -hmm. To make it more readable or to, to highlight something uh, in the list. Is that clear mm -hmm. so far? Yes. Okay, and then... Okay, um, did you do a, a list inside the list before? So, okay, 
And so this is an order list. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we have cats, dogs, and wombats. And mm -hmm. then the dogs, we would like to make like something like a sub list or an inner yeah. list. So mm -hmm. to make an inner list, we are able to actually um, uh, make an order list inside. So we will see how we, how inside dogs, we are mm -hmm. able to actually insert these types or, or these species for the dogs. So if you see here, this is our dogs that was in the outer list like that. Mm -hmm. And this is our inner list that we actually brought from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so did you see that before? Yes. No, no. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's clear. I don't need to go into too much details, right? Clear. Well, I need to show it to you in reality or no need? No need. No. Okay, that is excellent. So this is a takeaway. Let me go a bit here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, again, as, as I believe you know that... Uh, the JavaScript is actually a, a dynamic language. Do you know what the meaning a dynamic web page? Let me go yeah. with the start. Where we have uh, buttons and some... only like that. Um, that's cool. What's the difference between a static web page and a dynamic web page? Static. Mm. Where we can put the uh, what's called in what's called these videos. Animation oh. okay. So the, so, the, the dynamic, right? Uh -huh. Okay, no. The dynamic is when you use the programming language inside mm -hmm. the HTML. Uh, so if you have only oh. basic HTML inside the page, so this is a yeah. static web page. If you put right. um, JavaScript, so it becomes dynamic, which means dynamic. it's mm -hmm. able to respond to your actions. If you um, okay. Drop a list or make certain choices, then the content of the web page will behave differently. But mm -hmm, a static mm -hmm. one, um, yes, you are able to click on buttons, but um, you are not able to see a drop list. You are not able to change the content mm -hmm. based on your uh, click choices. So it is a bit limited compared to dynamic web page. Okay. Okay. So in in a dynamic web page, you are able to key in your name and you are able to based on your name you are mm -hmm. able to see some different content but in a static one you are not able to do that okay mm -hmm. okay. okay so uh, I will not talk about um, that the JavaScript is popular and and there is of course high salaries for people working in, in JavaScript but but let me let me uh, pass this we go but to is it is it still popular or Things. Yes, yes, it yeah? is true. Okay. It, yes, mm -hmm. it is true. Okay. Yeah, it is okay. still popular. Yeah, okay. it just it, it it survived the competition from mm -hmm. from fifteen to twenty years ago, and mm -hmm. it is it, it's I mean strangely getting a, a high popularity actually. So it is true that mm -hmm. a lot of things is done in JavaScript. So yes, be, be rest assured that it is still mm -hmm. popular. Okay, good. Okay, so we have. Uh, three ways that we are able to add JavaScript code to our web page. Are you aware of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first way is that we put it inside the body, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is, uh, so you know here, uh, so I think this is, this is clear to you how we call that function here. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are sure? Clear? What do you mean? Um... I mean, okay, I, do, do you understand what is, okay, first of all. We, we open the JavaScript okay. and a HTML file, right? We yes. add. Uh -huh. it's, it's true. To open, just to open these scripts, uh, how it's called here. So it will work. I mean, oh, okay, but but oh. yes, but but yes, but wait. Uh -huh. uh, you are a programmer, so uh, we uh, you need to also deal with problems when it happens. Now, let me first understand the basic thing. Do you know what mm -hmm. is the meaning of function? Function. Um, how to say? We we create some. I don't know. No, not really. No, I don't know. No worries. I mean, it's it is fine to to dig in your brain until you understand. So the basic mm -hmm. thing is 
we call a function, I know that, uh, yeah, we jump into components. functions uh, typically mm -hmm. very fast in, in, in JavaScript compared to other language. In other programming <laughs> language, we, mm -hmm. we go talk about functions maybe, maybe after maybe seven or eight uh, classes. But in JavaScript, this is just the basic. So the point yeah. here is that you mark pieces of code with a name using mm -hmm. the word function. So it means that uh, you want to tell that, so you here see one line inside the function, but mm -hmm. typically you can put up to 20, 30 lines inside the function. So when you see these 30 lines, you are marking 30 lines of code under a name. When you call that name, you will execute that 30 lines of uh, code. So you mark parts of code and you give them a name. So mm -hmm. you mark pieces of code and you give them a name. And you group them by using a function. So when you call that function, it will execute whatever lines inside. So the function is, is used to group lines of code inside it. And you mm -hmm. mark that lines of code with a name. So that name you can change. And yeah, that's it, I believe. And I mm -hmm. did I manage to make it so so clear or I guess so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So do you know what is on click? When we click on this on so, something. Okay, yeah. that's good. Do you know mm -hmm. what's the meaning event? A yes, event kind of like a button or something. We um, create event you, for this button. You you, you are you, you okay it is good that you are uh, yeah you are around the reality but okay the event is every action that we take or perform uh -huh. on the page so okay. for one of them is click um a press on the keyboard is an event that that occurs and we are able to catch it a mouse movement is an event that we are able to catch so if mm -hmm. um, if the person or the user move the cursor on the mm -hmm. page, it's an event. And I'm able to execute code based on that. If he just click on the middle of the page, um, this is an event that I'm able to catch. He does not really need to click on the button for me to okay. catch that event. So his mm -hmm. movement, I'm able to catch. Is that important? Mm -hmm. Actually, yes. Did, mm -hmm. did you hear about heat maps before? Mm -hmm. Not really. Okay, so um, yeah, so uh, it, one of the things that is also done a lot with, uh, with JavaScript is heat maps. Heat map mm -hmm. is, is used by uh, website owners and even people who do uh, marketing and especially also design. So mm -hmm. you, okay, let, let, me, let me say it in this way. Do you think that we put the buttons right and left and big and small and with different colors just based on nothing based on the love that you have for the color no Not there really. is a science behind it the science yeah. is mm -hmm. the study of the user behavior the user mm -hmm. behavior can be only understood if you install a heat map inside the website the heat map will will show you where the user tend to click which button he tend to click and mm -hmm. Which button, when you place it to the right or to the left or under the video or to the right of the video, he tend to click which button more. So mm -hmm. the, the heat map will show you uh, Warnamera means that, oh, uh, let me see. Um, uh, so it will show you red. So if you have buttons like that, okay, and you have buttons. Uh, so this is button one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and four. So it will show you, uh, of course, I used, I am bad. I used the red color, uh, so I'm not able to change it, but uh, mm -hmm. it will show you um, a lot of red, 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 red here uh, around mm -hmm. the buttons that is really clicked a lot by the user. So maybe a little bit here, a little mm -hmm. bit here, and a little mm -hmm. bit here, and you will see now, okay, so the user tend to click that button more than the other buttons. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also the color of the buttons uh, affect the user click. 
you want the user not to leave your page. The, it, it, I mean, you as a programmer, you it's not only that you design a page that satisfies the user, uh, 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 the client. Sometimes the client, um, he doesn't really understand about these details. You need to provide him with a page that makes the user uh, use his website, either buying his product or staying on the website more. If it is an article mm -hmm. uh, website, you also need the user to stay. How we can make him stay and click more buttons to to go deeply inside the web page and not go out. So also you have to understand that Google monitors how how um, how much time the user mm -hmm. spend on a website, and there is a certain metrics or a number that can show mm -hmm. that if a user the more the user stay on the website. Uh, there is a certain metrics I cannot really recall the name. So this certain metrics, when it is uh, high, like this, 60%, so it means that the user uh, spend only seconds inside your, web your website and then go back again to the Google search. So Google is not happy about that. Google yeah. would like that the, the search results that appear, uh, it is satisfying to the user that the user spend a lot of time inside the page. So it means that the user, the Google already find to them or provide to them a good result that satisfies mm -hmm. the request. Do you understand what I say? Yeah. So yeah. again, the, the design has to be reflective on the user behavior. It's not about, okay, you want to build color or um, and just certain colors that you, you think that it's li you like and the customer also likes the design, but there is a science behind it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, did I go to a into areas that you really don't need to know? You are not interested to know? I no need to talk about these details later? Uh, no, it's a good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, we know that we are able to insert the JavaScript inside the body. That is mm -hmm. one of the ways. Um, okay. Uh, of course, he's talking here, um, uh, if the script <laughs> it works or it doesn't work, he, so he insists that this kind of um, uh, quotations also mm -hmm. might, so we don't want to, to do this kind of uh, uh, double quotations. We would mm -hmm. like always to use the, the script tags in this way. Uh, that is mm -hmm. one of the things. And, mm -hmm. okay. So, and okay. Uh, let me see here, I think. Um, let me confirm that before I move from here. I think this is quite simple slide. Uh, do you know what this will, will make uh, appear in, into the screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so when the user click, this will get executed. The alert will, will appear as a window. Uh, yeah, uh, hello. Yes, okay, That's, that is mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me go to the second way. So the second way is to actually put the code in the head section and there is an advantage in that so i am not i am no longer putting the script inside the body i put it on the header section okay mm -hmm. do you know what what benefits that brings to to uh, to our code and to the page that you put the script in the head section no not really okay why so, in the head uh, why in the head yes so if you, if there is a code, I mean, no, sorry, not a code. If there is mm -hmm. images or even videos or music files that is tied to your script, JavaScript code uh, here, if you put the script code inside your header, so mm -hmm. this is the one of the first parts that is getting read uh, by, the, uh, by the browser. So if you put any files that need take time to get them loaded here, images or or even um, some kind of video files, so that will get uh, read much faster and the browser will start to download that images much faster than if you put mm -hmm. it in the body. If you put it on the body, only when you click on the button, then, he, mm -hmm. then the browser will start to download that images or, or files. But if you put it in the header, he will actually start to download that from the start without mm -hmm. even waiting for you to click. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that, so of course that is happening in the back, background. 
the user does not really know. So, but it affects. So when the when the action lags, when there is a slow, uh, so when the user click a button and then he saw that there is it's not smooth. So mm -hmm. it, it turns out that the programmer have a big role in playing here. So if he plays the script here, then it will be much faster than when he plays it inside the body. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, what we say here, uh, this is just to, to confirm it. What we want to say that when we place the JavaScript in the head section, the files will download up front. So if you have pictures, videos, or sound files inside your JavaScript, it's mm -hmm. much better to always put uh, the, the script of the JavaScript okay. uh, in, inside the header section. Okay. And mm -hmm. okay, what is the second method? The second method, or the third method, sorry, is to actually, uh, can I have a, another one or two minutes maximum? Just sure, to... sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to say is the third method is actually to start putting uh, the javascript in a separate file okay so uh -huh. yeah this have a strong benefit did you try it before yes i always did a separate file javascript as a Not start mm -hmm. as a start you should uh, when you are troubleshooting your code you should not put in a separate file okay it is more oh. accessible and easier to put all in one place and to uh -huh. put it in the header until mm -hmm. you confirm that there is everything is working fine there is no errors mm -hmm. Then you yeah. start to move them in a in a separate okay. file. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. do you you understand this how it looks like, right? Well, yes. I mean, this is how you link the files. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. okay, I believe that is um okay. Let me just uh, tell you that um we are able to actually put many functions inside the code. Am I right? Did you try mm -hmm. that before? Okay, and I also believe, I mean, let me confirm that. Did you ever try to put um, a mm -hmm. click? And so you call a function. So if you see here, this is an input, yeah. this is just a button. And yeah. this is another button. On the click, he will execute that. On the mm -hmm. second uh, click to that specific button, he will mm -hmm. call that function. But on mm -hmm. the image. Mm, yeah. yeah. So you, you managed to execute that before? I don't remember. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Mm. So, it, so it means that if you have an image that take a shape of a button, you yeah. are able also to, to specify the, the size of that and you're mm -hmm. able to call a function uh, based on that. So I would say, um, let me see here if I need to... Okay, um, let me share that as a last thing to share. Uh, okay. I think you can see my screen, right? Yeah. yeah. So here, I'm able to say uh, open in a, a default viewer. I believe you might search something similar on your uh, PP edit. So okay. if I, so this is, this is the code that the three function that we um, uh, that we want to call. So this is the mm -hmm. first button, this is the second, and this is the third one. So the third one is just an image, an image of a button. If I click on it, okay. it will mm -hmm. also trigger the, mm -hmm. how, yeah, the function and so on if I do here and so on if I do here. Okay, so um, I think uh, if you understand that, then this will bring our class to, to end. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just hear your feedback about the class and what you want to improve on the next classes. Oh, I think we we start create some page maybe. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. Okay. Uh, because I don't really remember how to create even function, all this stuff, how to create an event. Or... Okay. So oh, yeah. so yeah. Okay. So because creating... I didn't practice for so long. I, I, I can see, yeah, it's clear, like, like you're showing me right now, but okay. how, yeah. Wait, All wait, wait, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't see my, wait, give me a second, please. Sure. You, you didn't see, did you see this image? 
Did, no. did, did you see you did see this page when I executed it? Oh, okay. No, I didn't see. <laughs> okay, so this it's... is this is. Can you see it now? Now I can see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an image that I I specified with yeah. with a certain. So I click on it then. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and I start to understand you. So we need to create um files and need ex to start executing code. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe at the end, I don't know, we create from zero, like, a, I don't know, a template. Okay, sure. We keep adding website. to it. Yes. Yes. yes yeah. Okay. But then, That's good. Yeah. yeah. We'll try mm -hmm. to do that. Yes. Okay. Because See I haven't ever tried, yeah, how to do, I mean, the, from zero to, to okay. the end. Yeah. How to even, uh, how to go to, to, to do on the official, I mean, when you pay for the server household, I don't know. Yes, sure. I, I can try to yes, yes. Sure. How to register or something, yeah, something like this. That that is yeah, that is easy. Uh -huh. I can take you through that. That's not okay. there is no worries I mean, about yeah. Uh, I mean, how when you we upload, are ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How yes, you yeah. upload and how you, you, you never uploaded No, uh, never, no, never true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can arrange that for you uh, as a start. Also, yeah, that is not an issue. Yeah, okay. I can. Great. So you you want to you want to register your own domain and you want to uh, start uh, something like this. I mean, the free one. Even. The okay. If so if it. you want a free you if you want a free one, then mm -hmm. I can I can give you um, I can give you access to to. Uh, Maybe one of my the servers that I'm using, then I I can give you mm -hmm. a domain that is not um, used at the moment that you keep can keep trying to to mm -hmm. put a code on it. Of course, okay. it's too early to to be yes, able to put early. a real code, but I can show you the ways that you how you can transfer a file and what is the details that you need yeah. to know about uh, uh, uploading a file to web server and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I I see you on Saturday same time. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. See you next okay. class. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're bye -bye. welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 -bye.